content presented in this podcast series, inclusive of text, graphics, images, or other material, is intended for general information purposes only. The information presented is not intended to substitute professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. You are advised to seek medical advice from a trained or qualified medical professional before introducing new items into your diet or healthcare regimen. Good evening to everyone, and today on our podcast series, we have an interview with Dr. Joanne Simmons Boyce, and I'll give you a brief introduction. Dr. Joanne Simmons Boyce is a natural products chemist and instrumentation technician, having several years' experience in the extraction and isolation of bioactive natural products from both terrestrial and marine sources. She has most recently been a speaker at our biennial symposium, Plants and Planning for the Future, where she spoke on her experience of using herbal supplements to reduce intraocular pressure for her mother, Marjorie Simmons. She comes from a background of practicing Barbadian traditional medicine as prescribed by her mom during her younger years. This practice was used as a remedy for colds, stomach aches, and also the maintenance of general health and well-being. Today, Dr. Simmons Boyce is here to tell us about her experience and her work with Barbadian traditional medicine. So welcome to our podcast series, Dr. Boyce. And I want to invite you to tell us a little bit more about yourself and also about your exposure to Barbadian traditional medicine in your family. Thank you so much, Jamila. Um, I, it is my pleasure to be participating in this podcast and sharing my experience with traditional medicinal um, practices uh, from a scientific point of view as well as from a personal point of view. Yeah. So as you correctly said, I am a natural products chemist by training. Um, that is what I did my postgraduate work in. And I was fortunate at the time to be working for a pharmaceutical company that was um, renting laboratory space at the University of the West Indies Paper Campus. And so I was employed at the same time as a research assistant with this pharmaceutical company. And they were basically conducting a large scale bioprospecting um, project where we were collecting Barbadian plants, including those used for traditional uh, medicinal practices. And we were taking these plants, extracting these plants with organic solvents, and you would end up with several um, organic extracts, depending on what type of compounds you were looking from to, to take out of the plant. And then these extracts were then sent for testing against different targets that they were looking for. So that, that, of course, along with my PhD research, really um, excited me because it meant that I got to see firsthand if a lot of these practices that we do, um, and when I say we, I mean general Barbadians and even Caribbean people, because you know that herbal medicine is not by any means restricted just to Barbados. It occurs practically yeah. all over the all world. All over the world, yeah. I got to see this firsthand and got to experience from a scientific perspective if, in fact, these plants and, and, and concoctions that we drink, the bushy and that kind of thing, um, if, in fact, they, they had the desired effects that we thought that they had. Mm. That's very interesting. So, like, would you be able to identify some of the plants that you all investigated? We, we worked on almost every plant in Barbados, Geneva. And that project started in 1997, and it continued for about 10 years. And some of the plants that we would have looked at, and they included just... mm -hmm. Cerise bush, um, the noni dog dumplings, um, tamarind, dunks, any plant that existed in Barbados, we collected it. And, and this was both the ones used for traditional medicine as well as some of the ornamental plants as well. The, because it was a pharmaceutical company, they were not looking for every type of bioactivity. So I, mm -hmm. should, I should say that. 
Oh, okay. um, so they were looking, they were looking at specific diseases and looking for targets um, of the targets against those diseases. Okay. So one one of the large scale projects was hepatitis. Um, so they were looking for, for so taking our local plants and basically doing a large scale screening to see if they find any plant that showed activity in their particular bioassays. Um, you know, it's a pharmaceutical company, so their their mm -hmm. information is very protected. And yeah. when they look for targets, they're looking for specific things. The truth is a lot of the medicine that we consume today, a lot of those compounds were originally isolated from plants. Yeah, yeah. So now just to go a little bit further into Barbadian traditional medicine, I know in your experience in growing up. I have early memories of us lining up every two weeks <laughs> religiously um, to take some aloe vera. And as a child, this is obviously not the most pleasant tasting um, thing that you can put into your mouth. So you can imagine that there was some retching and that kind of thing. And my mother, especially, um, she was very strict about this, taking this um, aloe vera. And her, her siblings as well, because it happened to my cousins too. Every two weeks religiously, you had to line up for this aloe vera. And if you were, I don't know how we can look at it, she would say fortunate. I would have said at the time, unfortunate. You got some cod liver oil or some shark oil to go with that. Uh -huh. And then they would give you half of an orange. Mind you, that was nothing <laughs> in comparison <laughs> to the salt that your taste buds had just experienced. In terms of like treating, you know, colds and flu, mm -hmm. stomach aches, cuts, burns, those sorts of things, like what do you recall as being used for those types of treatments? Um... Well, I'm, I'm going to start with the cold and the flu because that's one of the reasons why you got the aloe as well. Okay. It was supposed it was supposed to help keep you, you know, build your immune system and, and the polyvoral too, help build your immune system, keep you free from the colds and the flu um, and any kind of sniffle that you might have. And it was supposed to be good for your skin as well, help, you know, they would say, oh, um, you need some aloe to help keep your skin clean. That, yeah, that's that. what... Yes, that's what that's what we were told. Um, of course, this would not be a complete uh, presentation without me talking about bush tea. Bush tea is our thing. Bush it's nothing else. Is our thing, you know, and certainly in my household, I live next door to my grand, my maternal grandparents, and I think that's where my mother got a lot of her knowledge from. Yeah. Because I can remember both my grandmother and my grandfather certainly using a lot of traditional remedies. And for like the bushi, for example, you know that basically you collect these plants and it was a whole variety of plants depending on what was available at the time. Mm -hmm. So things like Christmas bush, Cersei bush, rock balsam, even pear tree, which would be our local avocado, pear tree leaf, um, St. John's bush. You had various different types of sage plants. You had four hounds and then cure for all. Those, those were things that went into the bush tea. And um, these plants, as I said, they were selected based on what was available at the time. And they, they were carefully dried. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, these plants would be laid out on a tray and put in the sun. And you let them dry. And if they don't dry completely today, you put them back out tomorrow. And then once they were dry, they were boiled in, in water, basically. So that's a form of extraction. So yeah. what you're doing now is that you're extracting any water-soluble compounds from these plants. And what you would end it with is a, what I would call a not-so-pleasant not tasting concoction. <laughs> <laughs> but... In my house, this thing was put in a bottle, and sometimes 
they they had that cough medicine, but please, yeah, oh, yeah. and they had a famous ad. It tastes awful, but it works. <laughs> That's exactly what I was just thinking. Like this is like Beijing, but please, it tastes awful, but it, it works. True. It works. Keeps off and cold and different true. things. The the thing I can't remember rock balsam though. The rock balsam would give you that that little burning on your tongue specifically, and so you had this concoction. And in my house, a bottle of this thing sat in the refrigerator all the time. When it was getting low, <laughs> <laughs> time to go out and pop it up. The plants were collected, and it was some more was boiled, <laughs> and the bottle was filled back up. Because this thing, this thing was just waiting for you to catch a cold. <laughs> <laughs> and at the slightest sniffle, oh dear, you have a cold. <laughs> so what you get? Yeah. And don't even let it start. Listen, a spoonful. I don't even know how they decided on dosage. To be honest with you, but but no, the, the the spoon, it, not the small teaspoon, but you know the mid sized one where you would normally eat drinks yeah. with or whatever. Yeah. That one was your, your normal tablespoon. Um, uh, that one was used and you would get a spoonful of this thing. As I said, if it had a little butlies in it, um, the burning from the menthol would make, yeah. would make it a bit more palatable. But you know that Cerise bush on its own is very, very bitter. Yes, yes. And indeed. then we had Wonder of the World. That's a popular one as well, the Bryophyllum. Um, or Calancho Canato. So she would send you to pick two or three leaves of, of Wonder of the World. And then you come back in and she would pong this thing um, with a mortar. And you had a mortar, do your mortar and pestle. She would pong this thing with a little bit of salt. And then obviously this green juice would be extracted and you would get a spoonful. Mm. Typical spoonful, you would get the spoonful of that. And that was supposed to help with your cold and that kind of thing as well. We had um, what she called miracle faints. But I've, I've been told that this is also known as coffee faints. And it is one of the vervain um, plants. It is uh -huh. from the genus Clerodendron. Um, that was used in a similar way. I can also remember castor oil leaves and dog dumpling leaves, the, the, the infamous noni. For years as a child, um, noni was very popular for, for us because if you had fever, ah. you would get these leaves packed to your chest. Okay. So you would get the noni leaves or you would get um, oil leaves. castor oil leaves. Yeah. These leaves would be packed to your chest to draw out the fever. Mm hmm and when you wake up, so you would, this thing would be packed on at night. And when you wake up in the morning, you, your body heat had these things singed. <laughs> um, they would also use the, the, they used to call the leaves from the, the noni tree, that's Miranda, Citripolia. They would call those leaves pain leaves. Because if your knee or your ankle or somewhere like that was hurting, you would warm these leaves and you would probably rub the area with some olive oil or castor oil and pat these leaves around it and bandage it wow. and it was supposed to help relieve the pain as well my mom would put onions and garlic in a jar and then she would put either a little bit of honey or some sugar with it and she would you know press it a bit to give crush crush the the plant material a bit but this would cause the the liquid because you know the juices would come out of these this garlic and this onion and that was given to us as well for colds. Wow. But now we know for sure that yeah. onions and garlic have a lot of antiviral components in yeah. them. So yeah. it made sense that you would administer something like that for colds. You had all the you had all the the teas as well. So you had all these different cool what they would call cooling teas. Yeah. Um, pear leaf and bay leaf, um, lemongrass. So we're softly, but pretty much any plant that was around, you could steep in some water and drink the tea. Because I can remember my grandmother and my grandfather, and this would be my maternal grandmother and grandfather, they had hypertension. And they would drink parsley tea okay. for hypertension. So parsley was supposed to help reduce your blood pressure. 
Oh. They they had a whole range of things that they would use. It was it was yeah. always boiling some herb. And even even like the normal herbs that we use, like you, you know, you can make thyme tea with you can stick your thyme or you can stick your margarine and they would drink drink all of these things in order to maintain um good health and well being. So just one last question. Are you still using plant medicine in your own home? Absolutely, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, well, we, we know for sure the benefits of turmeric. Yeah. yeah that is yeah. that is well documented today. And, and yep. it's effects in terms of being a, an anti-inflammatory. You know, you have the curcumin. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. an anti-inflammatory agent. So... Practically every morning, I drink, <laughs> I drink, I drink some kind of herbal tea. To be honest yeah. with you, um, okay. with uh, it can it can be a variety of things. Sometimes it's sometimes it's sorrel, um, sometimes it's lemongrass, um, sometimes it's one of the heritage tea blends. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Sonia, <laughs> it's true. Thanks I do I enjoy those because as well. She has the, some really delicious blends. Sometimes it's cinnamon and, and hot water. Um, cinnamon is supposedly good for, for helping to regulate your blood sugar. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. So I, I use that sometimes. Sometimes I just drop the cinnamon stick in my water and let it slowly mm. um, infuse the water over, say, the course of the day. And as I fill back up my water bottle, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes it's a piece of lemon. Or, or orange or in, in steeped in hot water because you know the citrus the citrus yeah. is high in vitamin C good for your body help to build your immune system so yeah. I am definitely very much using um, herbal products I even use um, bilberry because okay. bilberry you can buy bilberry the leaves from the um, like nature's discount the the plant stores yeah and um that is supposed to be good for your eyesight and as somebody who suffers with glaucoma yeah. um i drink bilberry it's in most of the uh, vitamins that you find around bilberry is is one of the important components you have ginkgo um that's supposed ginkgo has a range of health benefits yeah um so all of these are things, all of these are things that I definitely use today. Well, it was a great discussion we had about traditional herbal medicine and also some of the work that you've done in your career and also some of your experiences. So I thank you for coming on our podcast show. Thank you, too, That's it for now. So thank you. Bye. Bye.